What's the meaning of this strange? When is it difficult to get a message delivered? How do industrial people keep in touch with each other? Industry on Parade. Peabody Award winner for public service, produced on film each week by the National Association of Manufacturers. How to attract attention in an auto assembly plant. When you need more right-hand doors, make this sign. And in a few minutes, along come the needed doors. More headlights, here's the signal for those. In a big 44-acre factory like this, even sign language plays a part in keeping efficiency high and costs down. And lower costs mean that higher wages can be paid without raising prices to the consumer. Communications in the factory is a problem that's being met by alert industrialists in a wide variety of ways. For example, a Cleveland machine parts manufacturer installed a radio station right in the factory to speed the flow of information back and forth between executives, supervisory personnel, and employees. A flow that is essential to the successful functioning of any industrial team. This control room is the nerve center of a miniature radio broadcasting system that's in constant touch with everything that goes on anywhere in the huge plant. Roving through the company's 25 scattered departments are men with walkie-talkies. Stoppages of production can be costly to the employees, the company, and the nation. Because only by keeping the wheels turning can we produce the things we need to improve the American standard of living and provide for the national defense. Trouble is quickly reported to the control room. From the control room, the report is relayed directly to one of the 84 departments or executive offices that might be concerned with the trouble. Some companies now even use television to promote teamwork and improve efficiency. Here at a California electronics company, a closed circuit TV system permits company officials to make announcements, tell about company plans or new products and generally tie the several hundred persons employed here into a more closely knit industrial family. There's a program every noon hour that includes interviews with interesting visitors. Employees have a phone number to call to pose questions to the visitor or to the boss. A big Michigan firm uses television even more spectacularly in spreading word about new products to employees in all parts of the country. A big showing of the new products, complete with entertainment, is staged here in Flint. And while local people are being entertained and informed in person, many thousands of others are getting the news simultaneously at theaters in key cities all over the country. In 50 big population centers, large crowds catch every word, every note of music, every gleam of light reflected off the new products. The far-flung corporation is brought together into a tightly knit group, unified by good company communications. Company officials can talk to many thousands of their associates at one time. Radio, television, now motion pictures are widely used too in imparting to personnel the information it must have to carry on as it should. By means of training films, new employees find out about company policies and practices, acquiring in minutes an understanding that might come only after many months if they depended on scuttlebutt or the grapevine. However, one firm, New Jersey's Atlantic City Electric Company, established an official grapevine. It put in a recording device that allows company officials to give out quickly and easily the latest news about the firm and its employees and any other information that should be distributed rapidly and accurately. Now, anyone in the plant, simply by picking up a telephone and dialing 277, can get a pre-recorded bulletin. The bulletins cover every imaginable subject but all have to do with supplying employees with information they need in order to remain well-informed, effective members of the team. Whatever the announcement, by this method they get the news fast and they get it straight.
The old-fashioned bulletin board, of course, will never completely disappear, although its importance is often diminished by the 20th century improvements on it that we have just seen. The bulletin board, like the reading rack, which carries more detailed information suitable for leisurely study at home, is a means of conveying information from management to employees. But it's equally important for employees to be able to communicate with management. A widely used device is the suggestion box, which makes possible communication in the other direction, upward toward the people with overall responsibility. Whether it's an actual suggestion box or an individual who serves as a walking receptacle of new ideas, the flow of information upward is fully as important as the flow in the other direction. In fact, that's what industrial communications are all about making sure that ideas flow in both directions to everybody's benefit. Here, for example, we see a group of Baltimore workers who make up a junior board of directors. Their recommendations to the senior board of directors are rarely turned down in a company that feels, like most others, that the interests of employees, stockholders, management, and the public are one and the same thing. At a railroad shop in Huntington, West Virginia, for instance, as their company prepared to build a new maintenance shop, C and O employees got together during lunch periods and after hours to discuss what a railroad shop should be like. One thing they decided was that the wheel shop had to be closer to the center of things so wheels wouldn't have to be trundled half a mile to where they were needed. There were a lot of suggestions like that, many of which were incorporated into a 15 by 17 foot model the men put together on their own. Needless to say, management was delighted by this spontaneous demonstration of company spirit. At the Grayson Controls Division of the Robert Shaw Fulton Controls Company in Long Beach, California, the matter of communications between all levels of the organization is given the most serious consideration. Here we see a meeting in progress at which an executive briefs foreman on company plans for the future. These are the supervisors of the plant's working force, the people who come into constant direct contact with the men and women who turn out the company's products. To most employees, the foreman is management. To top executives, he is the key man who serves as the chief communicator of vital information in both directions. And since the big job of those executives is to make things happen that otherwise would not happen, and since communications is a means of accomplishing this, their dependence on the foreman is considerable. Consequently, frequent, even daily briefing sessions are common throughout industry. Here, the communications link is closed as supervisor and employee exchange information or opinions. Occasionally, as now, top management participates directly in the exchange, although in a large company employing thousands, such direct participation is less frequent. The interview in progress here is for the purpose of gathering information for the plant magazine another means of communication in which this company excels. The reporter gets a laugh item that's likely to put this employee's name in print. Actually, the women normally work almost side by side, the news gatherer being among the magazine's spare time department correspondents. Bigger stories are handled personally by editor Joe McMillan, who's often accompanied by a photographer. These men are among the many who staff thousands of employee publications throughout American industry. Some plain, some fancy, the periodicals are designed to make sure that all employees receive all the news that affects the welfare of their companies and thus their own welfare and that of their families. Now let's get back to the department correspondent we met earlier. While her news items are still fresh and timely, they're collected by the editor himself. With the deadline for the next issue fast approaching, he may have a question or two of his own, a fact or a date to be checked. Everybody wants his name in the magazine, but not if it's going to be misspelled.
Back in the office, the editor and artist William Miller concentrate next on one of the spectacular covers that make their magazine famous among industrial journalists everywhere. It's the rule in this office to pay special attention to the covers, to make them as eye-catching, as attractive as possible, so that the reader will want to find out more inside. Employee publications, like newspapers and magazines of other kinds, must be read to be worthwhile. Unless the information is presented in an interesting manner, gaining a wide audience, the whole operation can be a costly waste. And now it's time for a last minute check with higher authority. Though procedure will vary with the organizational structure used by individual companies, it's the Public Relations Department that's responsible for this magazine. So the relief valve, as the publication is called, gets a thorough going over before it's passed along to the printer. Again, there's special attention to the matter of the cover, which often has gained its impact from the way in which it makes use of movable dials, cutouts, pullouts, and many other attention-getting devices. Some back issues serve to illustrate the point. A wheel of fortune is a forceful reminder of the high standard of living enjoyed by industrial workers. An official message from management was presented in this fashion. Who could resist pulling it out to read? And so they go. Examples of the way the editors of company publications all over the country are seeking to bring to their readers facts bearing on the operation of our economy. Such matters as inflation, and how it affects everyone and what causes it. In homes across the nation, it is important for people to know that wasteful government spending harms everyone, that tax burdens that are too heavy hamper the ability of people to save and invest and prevent business from growing as fast as it could and providing more and better jobs. Company publications let families like this know that management and labor by working together and cooperating to prevent waste and produce more efficiently can provide more of the good things of life for everyone and assure American preeminence in the world. American industry builder of a better tomorrow has presented Industry on Parade, a service of the National Association of Manufacturers.